Well, it's seven o'clock in the morning and I'm just about to do a solo wild camp. I plan to be out there and uh, build a whole natural shelter and uh, do a lot of stuff. So I'm going to be going up some logging roads and I'm going <clears> to <throat> drive as deep as I can into the woods on some of those logging roads. And I have a bit of a plan, follow a stream and basically follow it into the middle of the woods and I'm not really sure what I'm going to encounter or what the woods is going to be like and I'm basically going to try to find a suitable area to set up a camp and build an all-natural shelter. Tracking up this stream has been pretty hard work. It's hard with the 30 pound pack and when you're also filming and stuff like that, but it's getting steep and it's becoming more of a gorge. And I don't know if you can tell, but up here, it's pretty much at least 20, 30 feet up that side, maybe 15, 20 feet up that side. Either I can continue to follow the river and hope I can find somewhere flat. Like I could camp here, but it's small and the, I just don't like the way the the wood access and stuff like that is here. I want to build like a really nice shelter so either I try to plant next to the river or I'm gonna to have to probably get up here somehow, get up the other side and to do that I'm probably gonna leave my backpack here and I'm just gonna scout up the river to see what's up ahead and then I might just climb up either side of these just to see what surroundings are around me. I'm just gonna throw my my scout survival kit on my belt too. So this is a truly gorgeous place. I mean, that water hole down there, it's, it's big. It's definitely, you could definitely swim in there. I actually see little fish. Surprisingly, I'm so shocked that there's fish in there. Uh, so maybe I'll test out my little survival fishing kit, but they seem pretty small and minnowy, but you know what, it might be fun just to try. Well, I got snagged about 10 casts in and I ended up losing my line. <laughs> but that's how fishing goes. <laughs> the problem with this site is that I pretty much have 40, 50 feet of sheer rock either side of me. There's not enough wood. There's some ground cover that I could do stuff with. On top of that, it feels a little mosquito-y here. So I'm gonna be scrambling up there. Well, that sucked. <laughs> um, this is incredibly dense, claustrophobic feeling up here. A huckleberry is overgrown and it's the shrubs are waist height or something like that. So it's, it's quite hard to navigate through this area. It's a, a workable area for sure. Not well, ideal. The side of the forest has a completely different feel to it. I mean, it's so... It's not so dense. There's literally, I don't see any ground cover here. There's no huckleberries. There's no ferns. There's, there's nothing. It's relatively flat, which is very important. The amount of wood access that I have here is, is substantial. It's insane. There's tons of dead standing wood. There's tons of blown over trees, which can be hazardous as well. 
but I have lots of wood to work with to make a natural shelter here. I think I'm going to find a spot here. So I'm actually quite gassed out from walking around, going up and down these gullies and stuff like that. So I really like this spot next to the river where I left my backpack and I'm just going to decide to have uh, some coffee and make a little bit of a fire. Okay, so now I'm ready to make my fire. I got some shavings of fatwood in here. I've made my shaving pile. I got some thinner pieces and variety of pieces around me. So all I'm going to do is use my striker because I like it using my striker more than my knife. I'm going to ignite this fatwood. Take my tinder. My shavings, put it over top, next onto pencil size wood. Throw more shavings on there. It's really nice to just sit and relax and enjoy the scenery, especially after running around up and down these gorges and stuff. Legs are kind of tired and, you know, it's really nice to just sit and have some coffee and just sit by this fire. It's gotten rid of all the mosquitoes and stuff, which is really good. It's getting close to noon right now. And I want to start building this shelter. I think this is it guys. Gives me plenty of space. These are both live trees here. So I'm going to connect my ridge pole here. I have pretty good flat ground considering the area I am in. Things to worry about is that I do have a really big dead standing wood here that's solid. I really have to eliminate all the dangers around me with my axe and with my saw. So I've spent a really good amount of time felling this dead standing wood, this dead standing tree. And you can see, wow, this was a chore. But regardless, I ended up getting through it and this thing is super heavy, but it's gonna be my work log. My ridge pole is set up. I've got two prop logs here and here to help bear some of the weight off the cordage. Because when you do a shelter like this, it needs to be able to bear a lot of weight. So this ridge can bear my whole weight. No problem, right? So my ridge poles are finally up. Sorry, not my ridge poles, my roof poles are finally up. That was tough. <laughs> I am so gassed after that. I need to take a break and I'm getting low on water and stuff. So I'm gonna have a power bar, drink some water, take a, I don't know, 15 minute break, fill in those side holes and then I'm going to have to collect some water after that. Prepping firewood. <laughs> oh, the chores. I made it tough for myself this time. I didn't bring a tarp. I wanted to do an all-natural shelter. And I wanted to do the pole uh, lean-to. Well, I finally completed the bed. It's 6 o'clock. And 
all the pole work is done on the shelter, I'm going to go down to the river, collect some water, and then I'm going to get some of the ground cover for my bed. And then we're going to make a fire, and then we're going to process wood, and then the day is never going to end, <laughs> and it's going to be nighttime, I'm going to be exhausted. <laughs> but it's fun. Just paracord wrapped it. There you go. Got my bedding on. So I just processed a whole bunch of wood. <laughs> I forgot to press play. I had some really nice shots in it too. Basically, I'm just splitting this up. It's pretty dry in the center. And I want to just try to get this broken up pretty quick. This technique works good for the smaller stuff. I prefer to stand it up and split it fully for anything bigger than this. Split this guy, just for fun. Nice and easy. Keep going. How low can you go? That's too dangerous. Don't do that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make some quick shavings with my axe and my knife. I'm gonna try to light some of the twigs around me. So I probably won't need too much. I find I get nice bigger shavings when I use my axe rather than my knife which kind of gives it a different grade of shaving. So I got some coarse shavings, kind of like those ones. Onto the knife. I'm just gonna go quick here, guys. I'm not making feather sticks today, that's for sure. I'm just gonna continue this and fight in time. So far, I've barely been winning. <laughs> just getting by. So. That would. So I'm gonna just make a few fat feathers. <laughs> a lot of fat wood. I got tons of it though, so it's all good. I got some twigs here. They feel dry. Things have dried out a little bit. Two bundles of twigs, and then I got the shavings. Wait, more of the fat wood? Onto the shavings. The twigs, some bigger twigs. Stuff's a little damp, that's why it's spitting. I got my, I fixed up a pot hanger here. I'm just making some of that, if you remember that pine needle that I picked up right at the beginning. We have in here my pine needle tea. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I got my bedroll out and I boiled up some more water and I'm just enjoying some of that pine needle tea. I've been collecting a bit of firewood. I got some logs going on, a bit of a fire lay. I must tell you, this pine needle tea is, feels rejuvenating. <laughs> I haven't eaten dinner yet and it's nine o'clock, so uh, there's a lot of chores to do today and I managed to accomplish a lot. 
pretty good, but especially this tea. Well, it's 6.45 in the morning, and I'm just putting some water on so I can boil up some oats. I started getting smoked out a little bit. Oh, the wind shifted directions and started blowing into my shelter a bit. And then I tried to make a bit of a debris wind barrier very quickly and use these logs just to deter the smoke from coming in. And the first attempt that I made, I made it too close <laughs> and I caught the thing on fire. But that was okay. It gave me a lot of coals. Two, two in the morning to three in the morning, it got really cold. I'm actually wearing my rain gear right now. It's just started to warm up. I got up about an hour ago and I was shivering. I had to get up and just sit right by the fire and build the fire up because I was too cold to just lie in my shelter at that time. Well, it's the time to go down back to the river and collect some water. I need to get water to put out the fire. I need to get water to boil some water for myself today. Well, this is it guys. This is going to be my last video. Last time I check in. Last time I come down to this river collect water. I'm going to be putting on my fire now and I've incredibly enjoyed myself. I put in a lot of hard work yesterday building my shelter. Pretty much worked all day. It's definitely a place I probably will come back to and maybe improve upon my shelter. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and please subscribe. This is Dave from BC Bushcraft.